Nowhere Else to Go, Chapter 3, A Miraculous Ladybug Fanfiction. Missed Part 1 and 2? Check the description below for a link, or click on the card in the upper right corner for the playlist. I hope you enjoyed the story. Ladybug? Cat Noir tackled her and rolled, but it was too late. She had been hit. A discordant sound welled up in her mind, taking over her thought process. She clutched her head. It was like having 20 different songs stuck in her head at the same time, playing at a deafening volume. Her head felt like it was going to split. Cat Noir snarled and rounded on the Akuma. It looked like he was yelling something, but Ladybug couldn't hear anything from the outside world. He launched himself at the Akuma and locked his arms to his side, in a bear hug to prevent him from reaching the pair of headphones on his head, the source of the discordant sound waves. It was surely the Akumatized object, but Cat Noir didn't have any free arms to grab the headphones with. And every time he tried to get close without restraining the Akuma, he was an easy target. With the Akuma's arms pinned, Cat Noir appeared to be yelling again, and the purple butterfly sign appeared on the Akuma's face, signaling that Hawk Moth was speaking with him. The Akuma broke free of his grip and touched the button on his headphones, sending two beams toward Cat Noir, who dodged. Ladybug was struggling to remain functioning. Her head was throbbing and she couldn't think straight, but it was getting worse by the moment, so she knew she would have to finish the fight as soon as possible before she was completely incapacitated. She focused all her energy on ignoring the noise in her head and summoned a lucky charm. It was a clothes hanger. Ladybug stared at it, but the sound in her head kept jumbling her thoughts and she couldn't figure out what to do with it. Cat Noir, I need your help, she screamed, unsure if he heard her. She couldn't hear herself. Cat froze and stared at her with wide eyes for a split second. Ladybug was usually the one who pieced together the endgame, but she had no choice but to put her trust in him this time. You can do this, kitty, Ladybug encouraged him, again deaf to the sound of her own voice, but it seemed to do the trick for Cat Noir. He sprang into action. Extending his pole through the clothes hanger, he yelled something at her, but she couldn't hear what. What did you say? He grabbed one end of the pole firmly, motioning for her to do the same. She held it. They were standing about 10 feet apart, holding the pole between them like a limbo bar, the clothes hanger suspended hook down in the middle. The Akuma looked between them, taking aim. Cat Noir gave the pole a slight jerk, a silent cue to go, and they dashed forward. The Akuma's influence was making it impossible for Ladybug to think, so she didn't try. She just instinctively followed the signals that Cat Noir transmitted through the pole and acted. They were close to the Akuma. Just before another sound wave hit Cat Noir, they switched places in mid-air to confuse the Akuma's target, spinning the pole like a helicopter rotor so the hook pointed forward. The momentum took them beyond the Akuma, and the hook snagged the headphones off his head. Cat Noir pounced on it with a cataclysm, and a black butterfly fluttered out. Capturing the butterfly, Ladybug was relieved when her mind quieted and she was left with only a pounding headache. One miraculous Ladybug later, and even the headache was gone. Nino was slumped in the middle of the school courtyard, holding his broken pair of headphones. The cataclysm had crumbled them to a dust, but now that everything had reverted back to normal, they were broken in a different way, one of the earpieces hanging off by a wire. I'm sorry the miraculous ladybug didn't fix that, ladybug said, coming to his side. I guess they were broken before the Akuma. Nino waved off her apology. It's cool, dude, uh, ladybug. I can just buy a new pair, no problem. But I still can't believe that dude broke them for no reason. So uncalled for. Something about Nino's comment bothered Ladybug. She and Cat Noir helped Nino to his feet, making sure he was okay before he left them to accompany Alia, who had come out of her hiding place now that the battle had ended. Ladybug turned to Cat Noir just as her earrings beeped for a second time. She hoped he would tell her what was going on but it would have to be quick. I read the lady blog, Ladybug said, pulling him aside. No time to beat around the bush. Why did you start patrolling? Did something happen? Just fulfilling my duty to our beautiful city, 
Cat Noir responded, taking advantage of their momentary closeness to drop his customary kiss on her knuckles. Ladybug was not swayed. We talked about it and decided it wasn't necessary. I was just enjoying the weather. Don't kid around with me. If there's something going on, you need to tell me. I'm not kitten, LB. It's nothing. He gave her a characteristic grin that aggravated Ladybug to no end. She knew something was up, but he wasn't going to acknowledge it? Was he really going to act more genuine around Marinette, a civilian he barely knew, than around Ladybug? It was an insult to their partnership. The Miraculouses beeped again. I hate to part with you, milady, but that's our cue. He extended his staff and bounded away. Ladybug watched him go for a moment, her mouth pulled into a tight frown before repelling off herself. He was hiding something from her, and that made her feel more uneasy than any of the signs she'd seen yet. Hey, Alia, you were there, right? Alia nodded, chewing a mouthful of tapioca balls. They were sitting on Marinette's living room couch, drinking bubble tea and watching a recap of the Akuma battle on TV. Since the fight had taken place on school grounds and news stations were forbidden from trespassing, the footage consisted of photos and short clips taken by students through windows during the evacuation. But true to her daredevil reporter reputation, Alia hadn't left with the rest of the students, choosing instead to find a hiding spot close to the action. Since it had been Nino akumatized, she hadn't uploaded anything to the lady blog out of respect for him, but Marinette knew Alia couldn't resist recording the fight. Do you have footage of the fight? Of course. Nine minutes worth. Can I see? Sure. Alia unlocked her phone, pulled up a video, and handed it to Marinette. In case you're wondering, it's already backed up on the cloud. Marinette proof. Marinette stuck out her tongue at Alia and pressed play. The footage started from shortly after Ladybug and Cat Noir had appeared on the scene. She scrubbed through the video, looking for when the Akuma had landed a blow on her. Looking for something? I'm not gonna sit here and watch nine minutes of video. Marinette replied offhandedly. I just want to see the highlights. There it was. The beam hit Ladybug who clutched her head. Marinette stopped scrubbing and let the video play normally. It seemed like Alia had been hiding under the stairs, so the audio was clear enough to make out what they were saying. How dare you? Weird, Marinette thought. Cat Noir rarely got angry with an Akuma. She watched him lunch at the Akuma. Why do you have to do this? What could you possibly want? Cat Noir was growling at the Akuma. Only a coward exploits other people to get what they want. The purple butterfly mask glowed and the Akuma responded, Hawkmoth says this will all end if you just give up your miraculous. Never. The video kept playing, but Marinette wasn't watching it anymore. She already knew what had happened. She puzzled over Cat Noir's behavior. He was clearly addressing Hawkmoth directly, not the Akuma, but that was out of character. Usually, he taunted the Akuma, treating the battle like a game. This time, he seemed to be angry. The kitty was really riled up today for some reason, Alia said, overhearing the video. I wonder why, Marinette mused. How did Nino get akumatized in the first place? She had been in the bathroom when the loudspeaker announced for everyone to evacuate. I didn't tell you? It was really weird, actually. Marinette closed the video and handed the phone back to Alia. How so? Nino and I were just chilling in the courtyard and this guy came out of nowhere, grabbed his headphones and snapped them. Marinette narrowed her eyes. What kind of guy? It was like a random man, not a student. I have no idea who he was or how he got in. What was he wearing? Sometimes you could tell things from people's clothes. Alia shrugged. Jeans and a shirt? I don't know, he just looked like a normal guy. But he disappeared once Nino got akumatized. Oh yeah, that was another weird thing. The butterfly was right there as soon as the guy did it. I mean, I doubt Nino would get that mad about his headphones breaking. 
but he literally didn't have any time to react before the Akuma got him. Marinette scrunched her brow. That is weird. It was almost as if the akumatization had been planned. A crazy idea came to her. What if that guy was civilian hawk moth? Alia considered it, looking skeptical. I don't know. I always imagined hawk moth being this creepy gentleman who stays in a lair. Like the Phantom of the Opera. I bet he hired someone to do it. He would do that, I guess. He doesn't seem to like getting his hands dirty. Why Nino, though? Good question, Marinette thought. She had a feeling everything was related. Cat Noir running away from home. His anger. The staged akumatization. It felt like a jigsaw puzzle that wasn't fitting together, and she wasn't sure how many pieces were missing. But one thing she did know was that she was terrified of whatever secret Cat Noir was hiding from her. Thank you for listening to chapter 3 of Nowhere Else to Go. Leave a like, dislike, or comment to let me know what you thought. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the upcoming parts. Cheers!